October is in the books, so here are all the games that I beat for October. The very first game that I beat for October was Resident Evil Village. We follow Ethan through the path of now we have to deal with four bosses and Mother Miranda. This is cool. I liked it. It's a good horror game. Just kind of weird to put in the universe of Resident Evil. I get why a lot of people don't like it because there's a lot of monsters that are not zombies. There's vampires and different things and stuff that does remind me of a movie. There is a movie that's got machinery and stuff like that that they took inspiration from. So that's a good game. I like the horror game. Definitely play it. It does take me a little bit of time to play this game because it's first person and does give me headaches. So that's why it took so long. The second game on the list is one of the few games that I don't recommend. Dead Space Ignition is one of the few games that is not fun. It just did not entice me to want to keep playing. But I forced myself through it because... I wanted to see the ending. I wanted to see if you actually battle some boss at the very end. You just hack doors and you hack computers and you hack things. There's no shooting involved at all. You don't shoot or use a puzzle to battle a boss at any point. The only thing that you see is cutscenes of them shooting the characters, shooting monsters and different things. But that's it. It's two characters that are in the Dead Space universe and that's the only thing that's connecting it to Dead Space. And then at the very end, you get the Dead Space outfit. I do not recommend this game. I do not recommend it at all. It's not fun. The third game on the list was Martha is Dead. This is the PlayStation 4 version, and I can confirm that it can be uncensored. So for anybody who is wanting to play it and don't have an Xbox, you can click in the options, but you have to manually go to the in middle of the menu screen find the option, and it takes a little bit of time of digging to find it, but you can uncensor the game and play it the way it's meant to be. So just FYI. You are a girl who is a twin. You find your twin dead in the river, and you have to investigate as to what happened to your twin. Who killed your twin? And you are having flashbacks and nightmares, and it's very gory, but it's just like any other horror game. I was not shocked by it. Um, a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, when you realize that there are nightmares and stuff like that and she's having flashbacks and what the real reason why and who the killer is, then it all makes sense. But you are not really that shocked by it. Like all these people on the stream were not prepared. There is a paragraph, two paragraphs sometimes, that says, Hello, you're about to play the uncensored version. It's very graphic and gory. Do you want to keep going? Yes. Hey, sorry, just FYI, you can skip cutscenes at any time if it gets graphic and gory. So to the people who are complaining about this game, they give you plenty of options to skip the scenes. You are just being dramatic for the stream or for the video, because I can skip it at any time. It said on the bottom of the screen, it said push this button to skip. But I let it play all the way out, and I was like, okay, that scene is a little much, but I, I powered through it and I got through it, so... I wasn't really scared at any point. There was no jump scares, so great game. I recommend this for anybody, but just trigger warning. It does deal with a lot of stuff that is very to do with like mental health, and I recommend that you read the disclaimer and fully read it. Don't just click yes. Fully read it because it does warn you exactly what's going to happen in the game, and it's a lot. So just FYI. There's some scenes I was like, I'm not doing this. What? I am doing this? Okay. Wow, I just did that. So if I'm a little like, whoa, that just happened, <laughs> there's gonna be people that are very sensitive to it. So remember, you can skip, but I don't recommend so you can see the full experience of the game. The next game on the list was called One Leaves. This is a trick game. It's supposed to be a horror game, but there's a hidden message to it, and it's basically just like an advertisement. So I didn't realize that, and I found it online for free, and I was like, okay, I'll play it. And I played it for the video, but found out through the game that it's not really a game. It's just like a like like a disclaimer and stuff like that. So basically, you're a kid. There's four kids with you, and you're all in cages, and then you're told by an announcer, hey, just FYI, you have one person that's going to make it, the rest of you are going to die. Good luck, and you have to run through the maze, solve all the puzzles, and get out before the other people do. And you have to find everything which way to go, so it's a fun game. 
I just wish it wasn't an advertisement and actually did give you a legit ending, but try it. It's free. After that, I played Alan Wake American Nightmare. This is a conclusion or continuation of the Alan Wake story for the very first one. You are Alan Wake and you are in a time loop this time and you're battling your doppelganger. You have to keep figuring out through each loop how to finish the puzzle faster or help the person that was killed in the previous loop. And I enjoyed it. I liked it. Um, you are basically using nail guns. It's back to it's the same mechanics as the first game. You have to use the light and you have to shoot. I love Alan Wake, so when I saw that this was on Game Pass, I had to snag it up and try it. Definitely recommend this game. It's a shorter version to the Alan Wake game, so if you don't want to play the first game, which is about eight hours, if I remember correctly, you will like this one because it's literally about three, four hours. So it's cut in half, or a little bit more than cut in half, so... Definitely recommend it. It's got FMV, it's got the original actors, and I enjoyed the game, so try it out for sure. Then I went to the Atari 2600 and wanted to play a game that I've been wanting to play for a while, and that is Haunted House for the Atari 2600. I don't think I remember beating it when I was a kid because you need the manual for the game. It really is a game that requires the manual, so you have to read it, and I'll give you a little bit of help. Uh, you're looking for an urn and it's broken in pieces. So you have to find keys, you have to find different things and avoid the ghosts and the demons and the spiders that are in the house. And once you find the keys, there's a master key. You can open doors and look for different pieces to the puzzle. And you want to find all the pieces of the urn. And there's an old man who had left an urn and you are just basically doing a dare. That's what it kind of is. You find the urn and you have to make a mad dash to the first floor to the main entrance. And it doesn't tell you which is the main entrance, you just kind of have to guess. So you'll come in and you'll be like, okay, you're in the middle of the, the first floor, so you don't know where the main entrance is. So you just try each entrance until it finally goes bing, bing. Like, it's like a little flashing light, and then you know you beat the game. And I was like, oh, I, I beat the game, hell yeah! Like, I wouldn't have known if I didn't read the manual that you need to follow through and get the urn pieces and then put the urn together and then take out the rest of the stuff and bounce, and you got the urn. Uh, I believe there is a fan-made sequel, uh, Return to Haunted House, that I gotta try out now, because I saw that on there, but definitely a fun game. Short, sweet, simple, to the point. You got nine hits, nine lives, and if you can get through the house and find all the pieces of the urn, you're the winner. Then I wanted to play a shooter, and that was House of the Dead Remake. I've been wanting to play House of the Dead on Switch or Wii, and I finally got the chance to play it because I finally got somewhat good controls. So this game, it's good. It's just the Switch Joy-Cons. They start going off center. Um, there's some issues. Like I got the dead zone kind of correct, but then the minute you move your controller, if you don't leave your controller in the center of the screen, if you barely move it, it's registers wherever the controller is and then it freaks it out so you have to flick it and you have to mess with it that's the only downside of this game if they do a patch and they fix that problem it will be a great game it will be a 10 out of 10 like it was the original arcade game with the crt but for right now it's sitting at about a seven or eight it's frustrating it has times where you really are just pointing where it's supposed to go but it's not registering i was about to put it on auto aim the highest auto aim, I think it's called Filthy Casual, and I was about to do that because <laughs> I was getting frustrated, but I kept going, but I had my original settings and just finally beat the game, but yeah, if you want to be a Filthy Casual, I will not fault you for it. This game needs to be patched to fix the Joy-Con problems, and yeah, you'll have a good time. Be a Filthy Casual. Then it was time to play a game that I played and beat a long time ago. It's been about maybe 10 years now since I played and beat the game, but it's called Dante's Inferno. This game originally came out and had a lot of controversy. You couldn't play it online, you couldn't stream it, and you had a lot of family and friends saying, no, don't go to hell, don't be bad. <laughs> it is does look like God of War, if you see the play mechanics. It's a little bit different, but for the most part, you are battling it like a Bayonetta or anything to do with that and pretty much you are going through and you have to battle with Dante to save your lady love 
You have the Battle of Satan and all of your people in the past that you had dealt with who you either killed or had as a family or a friend. And you have to get through all the layers of hell. And once you get through all the layers of hell, you can save your lady love. But it's a good game. I recommend it. I recommend watching the show. They have an animated movie series that is really good and you'll enjoy it. I love this game. I've always loved this game. I wished they had made a second game or something like DLC that was actually an add-on to it that kept you going, but they did have co-op if you want to play it on Game Pass to be able to play it through. So I recommend this game. It's a good game. Don't look at it like a God of War clone. Look at it, enjoy it, and just have fun with it. And you'll kind of not like the swing mechanics. That's the only thing that's going to irritate you, but get Dante. Get him out. You'll be fine. Then after I played Dante's Infernal, I decided to play another Resident Evil game, and this was on the backlog. I picked this up and I got it for dirt cheap. It's like 10 bucks now if you want to pick it up. Maybe 20 at the most. And that is Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City. Um, I was about to say Code Rock. <laughs> Basically, I... Don't know what's going on with this game. It's a little bit wonky. So just like several other games that are shooters, the AI is stupid. You are a group of people who are hired by Umbrella to go in and clean up the mess. So you're helping all the tyrants, you're helping all the people that were working for Umbrella, and you're trying to get your stuff done and get your money and bounce. And that's it. Throughout the time, you'll see Jill, you'll see uh, Leon, Claire, everybody who was in the city at the time, you'll see all of them. You'll see all the characters. You'll see all the tyrants, you'll see Nemesis, you'll see Mr. X, you'll see all those people. And it has good moments and bad moments. One thing I don't understand is whoever was doing the voice acting, director, whoever you are, why did you let some of that stuff fly? The guy who did Nemesis was horrible. <laughs> He sounded like a normal human being. It was kind of sad. And then there were certain parts of the, the game where I'm like, this is very bad at voice acting. And it's not even survival horror. It's a shooter. If you're into shooters, you're going to like this game. If you're not, it's not for you. This is not the Resident Evil that's going to be for you. This game has moments where I was so frustrated. I, I learned this and I'll help you out. The AI is not going to help you. The AI doesn't do Jack Dilly squat. They just sit there and they point and shoot at the little minion enemies and that's it. You have to battle the boss yourself. So I recommend that you let them be the targets and you run to them and then the tyrant or whoever go after them and then you just keep reviving them and that just keeps working. And you just keep picking up ammo and shooting and getting your health and whatever you got to do and that'll help you get through all this because the game AI is horrible. <laughs> There's moments where... If you were in a little corridor or hallway and they got there and they stopped there, you couldn't go through. So I'm literally waiting for them to figure out what they're going to do with their life in that game. And then I waited for them to move because there's no moving them. You can't move them. They just station themselves there. They're stuck there. They're going to stay there. And you have to just let the AI figure out life. <laughs> so it's not a great game. I don't recommend it for people who are into the survival horror part of Resident Evil. It's not going to be fun. I do recommend that if you're into shooters, try this game. But have a good time with the comedy that it is. And deal with the frustration and get through it. But yeah, not a great game. After that, I decided to play Alice Madness Returns. This was on Xbox Game Pass and I never got to play it on the Xbox 360. I was choosing between other games and this always kept falling through the this middle and then I was like, oh, I'll get it later. Never got it later. So this is a good game. I recommend it to anybody who is into Alice in Wonderland or any trippy horror games. Uh, basically, this is just like Alice in Wonderland. You're the girl Alice and you're going through the life. It is more like gory and graphic than Alice from the original one. I mean, yeah, she was tripping balls the whole time, but <laughs> it's just basically you're Alice. And she gets real the whole time. There is a lot of stuff that is not for kids. There is moments where you're like, okay, so they went there. Cool. So it's a good story. I recommend it for anybody to check it out for people who like Alice in Wonderland and different things like that. 
Um, the mechanics are similar to kind of like Bayonetta, where you have little minions and you gotta battle, and, and then there's a big boss. There was a lot of good Im like imagery throughout the whole thing. Looking at the background, it was fun. There is frustrating times in the game where you have to figure out in the element how to like push a like a little button over here, push this button over here, and then run for a mad dash to get to a door to open up. And it's like you have to hop over things, and there's invisible stuff, so you have to like shrink yourself down to see the invisible stuff. But other than that, it's a good game. I recommend it. And I will say, take your time. Stop and take breaks if you get frustrated. Because this game has a really crazy ending that you need to see for sure. And I wanted to go out of my comfort zone, so Peter will be happy with me again. <laughs> I decided to play Doom. The shooter Doom for the reboot slash remake. I don't know if it was a reboot or remake. And it's from 2016. And... I liked it. I enjoyed it. It's a good story. Um, I apparently picked the good one because I was be going between Eternal and this one and I was like, you know, what? let me play the original reboot, whatever it is, and I enjoyed it. You are basically the same guy from all the Doom games, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but you are battling and going through and shooting and trying to get to this one main person who is causing havoc and opening a portal to the underworld where the, the demons and hell is. And so you have to survive the hell and get through and destroy the person who opened up the portal. So short, sweet, simple. You have fun. I love the bosses. They really challenged me. Took me a little bit of time. I got stuck on a couple of them. But once I figured out the patterns, I had a good time. I liked it. One of the few shooters that didn't destroy my spirit and I kept going so I recommend you get play it doom it's on uh, game pass probably for a little while got it then I decided to play a game that I enjoyed from the original one which was two point hospital they decided to do two point campus um it's a lot more fun than two point hospital and they did an update for Halloween where they had the students and other people as different characters and dressed up for Halloween. So there is some characters that are like uh, wizards and vampires. So they added just some people like with pumpkins and different things. And the campus had all these like decorations. It was really good. I liked it. I recommend to anybody who's ever played Two Point Hospital or Two Point Campus, do the bare minimum the whole time. Uh, I learned this from Two Point Hospital. I got a little too excited, aggressive and started just adding more people and too much stuff and didn't pay attention to my budget. Whatever they ask you to build, only build that. Build a couple bathrooms, build a couple showers, call it a day, do the bare minimum. Then when they ask for something, then build it. But that's how I did it and I got... I didn't beat Two Point Hospital, but because of that strategy I used, I beat Two Point Campus. And it's a fun game. It's a filler game. It's a game where you can sit down mindlessly, control the world around you. And then go back to playing another game. Or if you're like on break and you're like, I got time to waste. What am I going to do? So, fun game. And I enjoyed it. Then it was an amazing 8-bit remake horror game. I don't know. It's a little indie game called Home. Benjamin Rivers made this game. And basically it is, you are a guy. Kind of like some nods and homages to Silent Hill and like Halloween and Cujo and Resident Evil and it's just got so many great points to it and basically you go through and you're investigating everything. It's like an hour and a half, two hour game where you have to sit down and play the whole game the whole way through. There's puzzles, there's different scenarios. It feels so good to play this game. It reminds me of an 80s, 90s game and you get through everything but you're a guy, you wake up, you don't remember anything. And you're trying to find your girl, Rachel, and you don't know what happened to her, but you need to look around and find her. And you keep finding people that are dead, and you don't know what's going on. So you gotta go back to your old job, you gotta go back to everywhere, everything's all chaotic, and figure out what happened. And it's got multiple endings, I like that, so you could choose what happens, and you could say yes or no, and I enjoyed it. I It's a 10 out of 10 game for me because... I loved it. I had streamed it and everybody, thank you for participating in the chat and making the polls go through. So I had fun with it. And the very last game that I played was The Quarry. This is, I don't know if it's a sequel or a prequel to uh, Until Dawn, 
so people made Until Dawn, they decided to have you in the same universe with the Wendigos and all that beautiful stuff. So you go through and this time there is a fortune teller that you meet and you have to figure out what's going on with her and keep going. And you got a group of camp counselors who everything looks like it's in the 90s, the computers, all that stuff. So I don't know if it's just stuck in the 90s or if it is in the 90s. But you play through and a guy decides to sabotage a van and stay longer than normal. And so now they have to get out and survive all the chaos and see how many people make it. So I did my playthrough and one person survived that was a Wendigo and then one person survived and didn't get an attack or anything happened to her. So I saved two people and I guess there's an option to go back and play and see if you want to keep survive save people kind of thing. I don't remember what it's called. It's a rewind feature. But yeah, try it out. Um, it's a longer game than the other games, but I can't wait for Devil and Me. And yeah, I enjoyed this game. I liked it. Sadly, my favorite character didn't make it, but the hair animations were weird. So the PlayStation 4 version, hair grows up and down the whole time. So <laughs> I don't know. It distracted me the whole time. I just didn't like it. So I recommend enjoy the comedy that it is and try the Xbox version or the PlayStation 5 and see if that happens. So we'll see. You have it everybody. I beat 14 games and now my total is 138 games I have completed this year. I'm happy. I'm enjoying the games. Horror Fest was a success. Thank you to everybody who participated in the Horror Fest, whether you watched a video a stream or anything like that. I enjoyed playing games offline and online and I just had a fun time with it. So let me know. What games did you play that were spooky or in general would you play for October? Was there any highlights or lowlights that you didn't like? Any low points? <laughs> I had a couple but thank you thank you. I appreciate it all. Happy Halloween if you're watching this on November. Happy Thanksgiving if you're celebrating Thanksgiving. And I'll catch you all next time. Bye, everybody. Linda the Gamer Gal. She's here, she's playing games. Linda the Gamer Gal.